We blame other people for stuff we broke. The third group is we blame ourselves for everything. Stuff we had no control over, things we couldn't fix. We beat ourselves up about everything. We defend ourselves in front of the attacker, but when we get home alone, we blame ourselves. I'm not enough. Imposter syndrome. I'm inadequate. I can't do it. Look at me, I mess up everything. We go all the way back to the first grade. That's why I flunked the first grade. That's why I went through a test. That's why I made an F on my report card. We go all the way back, all the way, read a whole resume to validate why we are no good and we start attacking ourselves. In our text, it is clear it does not leave it to our imagination to conclude what category this is in. Peter is definitely in trouble. Yeah, he's gonna die in the morning. Yeah, that's right, he's gonna die in the morning. But it is not the devil. It is not the other disciples. And the worst part is, it's not even Peter. Peter has done nothing wrong. Why do bad things happen to good people? And you find yourself in this situation where not only are you trying to endure the problem, you're perplexed because you don't understand the problem. I don't understand why you don't like me and you my child. And everything I ever did was, was, was for you. I don't understand why you don't like me and I'm your son. How could you not like your child? And you go through all of these these questions in your mind. And when you come to church, all we do is tell you is give him a praise. But let me tell you what praise won't do. Praise won't answer your questions. Praise won't always resolve your issue. Praise won't take the place of an apology. You dance all over the church, but you still didn't apologize, and you don't have no peace, and I don't care how fancy you that you can run around this church until you need a water bottle that says Potterhouse on it, and you still won't solve the problem because praise won't fix what you need to fix. I knew, I knew what nobody gonna shout. Give them a B1 shout. They need to shout. Let me tell you something. You're trying to figure out what is going on and, and the church comes to you and just tells you, just praise the Lord. Hey, I got a lump in my breast and I'm going to give God the praise. But when I got through dancing, I still had a lump in my breast and it's growing. And what do I do when I find myself in a situation and I don't know who to blame and I don't know how to pray and I don't know how to respond to it and I don't know how to talk about it. I don't have language for it. I'm going through it and I'm going through something. Peter is going through something that the other disciples could not relate to and he's going through it alone. Even if they could relate to it, he can't talk to them. I want to talk to some people who are going through some stuff alone. You, you, you're going through some stuff alone. Even though other people are around, you're going through it alone. Even though other people have an opinion, you're going through it alone. Even though other people may be talking about it, you're going through it alone. Peter is going through this alone. There's no James, there's no John in the room, there's no people standing around him, because misery kind of enjoys company. If I gotta go through it, let me go through it with somebody. Let me go through it with somebody. But most of the things that torment the soul, we go through. alone. We go through alone. And single people think they go through it alone because they're single. But married people know <laughs> that being married doesn't mean that you're not going through it alone. That having somebody laying next to you doesn't mean that they're going through it with you.
Thank you for the 10 people that aren't hypocrites. <laughs> the 10 people that can admit that you can lay next to somebody and you can even spoon. <laughs> Alone. <laughs> because this, this is a keen test for men. Ladies, when you ask him what he's thinking, and he says, nothing. It doesn't mean that we're not thinking nothing. It just means that we figure we're going through this alone. Peter is going through this alone. What did he do to go to jail? Thank you, Luke, when you wrote the book of Acts, you do not leave me to guess about how Peter got in jail. He got in the crossfire of Herod Agrippa I's ego. He got in the crossfire of a political decision where the king decides to attack the church member for strategic advantage to go up higher in rank amongst the Jews. Backstory is King Herod Agrippa I was partly Jewish. He had been sent to this outpost. He wanted to be their king, but the Jews did not legitimize him as being authentically Jewish. So he's trying to get some Jewish points. I don't know if Jewish people have points, black people have points, but Jewish people, I don't know if y'all got points or not, but he's trying to get some points. And so he knows that the Jews don't like the Christians. So he is hating on who they are hating on to gain status so that he'll have more power to get where he's trying to go. He doesn't even know Peter. He doesn't even care about Peter. He's not thinking about Peter. He doesn't care about Christianity. He doesn't care about what they're trying to teach. He doesn't really care about Orthodox Judaism. He cares about his career. If you don't understand why you are being attacked, you don't know how to respond to the attack. If you don't understand that the bloggers get paid by the hits they get, then you'll think they're talking about you because you're you. No, they're talking about you because people know you and people are going to argue about you. And the more they click, the more you click, the more they get paid. And you don't understand that talking about people has become a business. Some people don't do nothing for a living except talk about people. I mean, this is your full-time job. What do you do for a living? So I talk about people. That's what I do, and it pays really good. Because if I talk about big people, I get a lot of hits. And if I get a lot of hits, then I get paid a lot of money. And if I get paid a lot of money, I don't need to work any other kind of job. All I need to do is say something titillating and salacious enough to get you to click on it. And the more clicks I get, guess what? The more checks I make. Thank you for clicking. Thank you for arguing both sides of the issue. Thank you for responding because you're driving my algorithm up and I am getting paid. So they pick you out, not because you are Luther Vandross or whoever you are, James Cleveland, whoever you are. Uh, no, 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 no. They pick you out because everybody knows you and everybody's going to click on it and you got caught in the crossfire. Peter had preached the day of Pentecost. He was an influential Christian. He had ignited the switch that provoked the outpouring of the Holy Spirit down on the people that caused 3,000 souls to be added to the church that day. Peter had influence. Peter had such influence that Herod figured, if I kill the first disciple and they like that, if I get the ring leader, I will really be on top. I'm going to really be on top. See, that's why every neck got to pray for every head. You can't get into a fight between the neck and the head and argue about position. You need to understand heavy is the crown that rests upon the head. The higher you go, before you pray about going 
up, realize the higher you go, you're going to get caught in fights that you didn't start. You don't even know the person. You don't know what's going on. I called a friend of mine one day, and I was reading an article in the Chicago Sun, and the guy was just giving me the blues. I mean, it was an entire op-ed, of which I was at least a third of the op-ed, and I didn't even know who he was. And I called a friend of mine, I said, who is this guy? And he told me who, well, I know now y'all want to know who it is. Y'all got all quiet like we at Starbucks and I'm going to tell you who it is. Come on, please. Now, I said, who is this guy? And he told me who it was. You know, I, I said, I never even met the guy. He said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you did or didn't do when you're in the crossfires of somebody else's ego. Whew. There's something about what I just said that felt prophetic. As it was coming out of me, it felt prophetic, like somebody in this room is in a situation right now and you are bearing the brunt force of other people's decisions that are affecting you, but they are not because of you. They have their own agenda and you have to stop worrying about yourself and worrying about your efficiency just because somebody is trying to get in with the Jews so that he can set up his kingdom. It has nothing to do with Peter's theology his preaching, his teaching, his gifting, his power, his favor, his anointing. Yet, Peter is in jail. It has nothing to do with him, but he's in jail. It was not even his fight, but he was in jail. It was not even his problem, but he was in jail. He has had no argument with Herod, but he is in jail. He has not ticked off the city, but he is in jail. Bad things do happen to good people. God does not always order sunshine in the morning. God does not always order uh, uh, blue skies and, and, and sea waves and seagulls flying over your window. That's not the way God works. God will order trouble for your life and allow you to get in trouble because God is a present help in trouble. And if you want to be where God is, God will let you get in trouble so he can show himself strong in your situation. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God will put you in trouble just so that he can show you how strong he is and that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. See, Herod was the king, but Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And what you got to understand is the accountant doesn't have the last say, the lawyer doesn't have the last say, the judge don't have the last say, the court don't have the last say. God is going to have the last say. It may take some time. It may take some test. It may take some trial. But what God has for you is for you.